The most sought after target in athletics, the four minute mile, was achieved yesterday evening on the Oxford University track at Ithbill Road. Running. For as long as humans have been around, we've loved running. He's pointing. Come on, he says. And it's a joke. We used to run to catch things. Sometimes we'd run away from things. Now we run for fun. Running is cool. You always look cool when you run. You always feel cool when you run. And when you run, people always stop and say, well, look, he's cool. Going for a run, I see. Good for you. Running is great. Is it a long run? Great. Then you must have planned well for this long run. You must have a decent pair of trainers on. You know you'll be taking with you all the right things and I bet you're carrying plenty of food with you too. No? No food? You must at least be carrying plenty of water. Oh dear, Ryan. This isn't very good. Remember, you're not a newbie runner anymore. If you want to get the most out of your runs, then you need to plan better. And if you don't want to spend all day tomorrow paying the price for your inexperience, then I suggest you stop and prep your run properly. Go on. Good boy. That's it. Back indoors. Go and prep. Planning for a long run can be a complete pain in the ass. This video isn't just about running further. It's about what I carry when I run what tactics I use to make sure I have a chance of finishing strong. It's the method behind the madness. Unlike other running essential lists, my list has been put together through my own mistakes, through trial and error, meaning that the driving force for my tactics are the need to remain upright whilst on long runs and I want to remain as comfortable as possible. So the priority is always to remain upright and running and not to be sat on the side of the road wondering what's gone wrong. I'm a relatively new runner compared to some who have been running all their lives. And I used to carry next to nothing when I ran. My distance built up and I eventually needed water. So instead of carrying it, I hid bottles of water in bushes. I'm just stacking water so I'm able to hydrate. This is at the five mile mark just after which was a pain to have to drive the route in advance and stash those bottles. And then as my mileage and endurance exponentially grew and as I lost a lot of weight, my body shape changed. Okay, I've bit the bullet. I've bought a hydration vest. I now feel like a proper runner. However, like a five-year-old, I filled it with orange squash. Now I comfortably carry my water in a running vest and I couldn't imagine running without it. Even with thousands of hours of training runs under my belt, I'm far from an expert. This is just my list. I'm not an athlete or a doctor. I live and run in Essex in the UK and I don't climb mountains. How about this review? Oh. Well, at least not often anyway. I will context this video by saying that you should always read up on your own running prep. I have listed a number of really good running books in the description that will give you all the information and motivation you may need to run further better. I started to compile it when I trained for my previous two ultras several years ago now. And recently I ran the Yorkshire Three Peaks, 25 miles over 5,000 feet of ascent. Let's do this. Four weeks ago, I ran Ultra London, 55k or 34 miles through South East London. It's like a little oasis in the middle of Mottingham or Woolwich or Plumstead, wherever the hell I am. Look, there's London over there. Ah, finish it Where is it? 
Yeah. My essential carry list hasn't changed on the back of these recent runs. And in less than two months, I'll be running the Thames Path Challenge 100K with this same kit list. In the past, I worked in the hustle and bustle of the corporate world, and there existed a handy guide to avoid firefighting. Within the division to help contribute not only to the also from a customer experience perspective. Well, good. I can't find the button. Firefighting is when you're in panic mode, trying to suppress mistakes and fix things live, like a really stressful game of whack-a-mole. The trick is to expect the unexpected, assume things will go wrong, plan for the worst, hope for the best, but you don't want to have to carry everything just in case. So you need to separate everything you think you need into one of the following headers. Number one, important and urgent. Number two, important but not urgent. Number three, not important but urgent. Number four, not important and not urgent. Everything you think you need in your kick bag will fall into one of these categories. I only ever carry items from category one and two. Important and urgent, water and food will come under this heading. You know you will, without exception, need these items no matter how well or badly things go. And then number two, important but not urgent. So for example, blister pastors will fall into this category. Eventually, your long run will become damage control. Running is made up of three zones. I've just run a blistering pace to this point. I've been running like nine, 10 minute miles. Zone one is the first third of the run where you feel good, strong and enthusiastic. The part of the race that feels the same as the majority of your training runs. Zone two is normally a distance past your regular training distance. And it's also known as the wall. Oh, that must mean we're at the 45K mark. No, Jesus Christ. That must mean we're at the 35k mark. My brain is foggy. This is the part where your energy drops and enthusiasm falters. And then the final zone is the danger zone. It's just an endurance slog at this point. So I want to just say, we've got 5k cheeky park run left, but we haven't. I missed it, we've got four and a half k. Nice one, cheers. More steps. I feel so good. My legs don't, but I just feel so happy. What an achievement. What an achievement. You'll probably use everything you have on you just to get to the finish line. The severity of each of these zones and the speed at which they appear in your run will probably depend on your own ability and how well you train for your run. Number one item on my kit is a good pair of running trainers. It seems obvious, but there are some things I've learned about buying the right pair of running trainers that makes a difference. So unless you're Eliud Kipchoge attempting your next land speed record, then you don't really need expensive trainers to run far well. I bought a lot of trainers because I burned through them at a rate of knots. So my current running trainers are a pair of hokers that are pretty much just road trainers that I use to run on tarmac and pavements. Um, I don't use these very often because they're not my favorites. I also have a pair of ultra Lone Peak trail trainers. These are brilliant for gripping onto muddy and dusty trails along really difficult um, uh, terrains and making a difference to, to my grip and being able to fight through some difficult runs. But yeah, these trainers are great. I'll come onto these in a sec. And then I have a pair of just really basic Adidas uh, running trainers. I'm also going to talk about these in a sec as well. My first 10 or so running trainers were some of the best on the market. But my favourite running trainers by far are a pair of £35 high street special offers. They're simply a great pair of running trainers as they have loads of space for my toes to spread out. They're not great because of what they might do for me or because of the marketing behind them. Um, they're just really cheap trainers. But they're great for just one simple reason. These trainers are very much no thrills. They're a cheap pair of trainers that I have run hundreds of miles in without injury or blisters. And my feet still feel comfortable in them even after 34 miles of non-stop running a few weeks ago and nearly 900 miles of training in them. I'm not advocating cheapest is the best, only that you never know if you have the right trainers on unless you run in them. But 
if I'm honest, they're not great for anything other than running on pavements and in dry conditions. The same as these. Both of these two trainers being, this one being the cheapest, this one being the most expensive pair I own, are not great for running on anything other than dry roads. Which is why I own these Lone Peak Ultras. I wore these Ultras for the Yorkshire Three Peaks last month and it was all tough trails. They were brilliant. While I'm running this really pretty track up to Ingleborough, I've bought some new trainers. I'll be going back to these basic road trainers for the Thames Path Challenge in September. Um, I know my feet will feel good in them and I'll be running on relatively well-maintained footpaths along the Thames in an urban environment. Still on the subject of feet, next on my list are my Indinji socks. I swear by these. Let me grab them. So these are my Indinji socks. They're absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, I'm trying to make the camera focus. So as you can see, they're toe separating. So when you wear them, they literally fit you like a glove. They separate my toes on long runs, stopping them rubbing together. I used to get blisters from my toes being pushed together and rubbing over distance. Wearing toe separating socks and trainers with a wide toe box has completely eliminated this issue for me. I discovered the hard way when I ran 100 miles in seven days last year. This morning, I'm, I'm, my, my toe is very sore. I've got it, I've got it taped up. It's the first injury that uh, I've sustained that's risking my, um, my running. Where my little toe basically rubs against the inside of the trainer, it built up this hard skin lump under the toe. Cut a long story short, that came off yesterday, but not just fell off. It, it forcibly came off and took with it a large portion of the underside of my little toe. Um, basically revealing just flesh um, it's pretty gross but it bloody hurts i also carry a spare pair of toe separating socks in my kit bag i change them if i get my feet wet or at the halfway point sweaty or wet feet cause friction which in turn cause blisters changing your socks mitigates against this next on my list is baby powder hang on let me grab the baby powder so all i've got is a is a pot of it because uh, i've used the bottle up but i always carry Baby, I'm not going to open it because it's going to go everywhere, but I always carry baby powder in my kit bag. Good old fashioned baby powder you can buy in any supermarket. I've heard loads of advice about smearing your feet in Vaseline. I've tried this and I prefer baby powder. It significantly reduces the friction in between your feet and the trainers. For Race of the Stones, I got it into my head that I needed to wrap my feet in KT tape. I think I watched a video on it. This was the single biggest mistake I made in that event. The KT tape ripped my feet apart and the worst part was that I couldn't remove the tape during the event as it was literally cemented to my skin. And then someone on an aid station gave me some baby powder and mentioned trying it for the friction. It was amazing. Immediately my feet felt better. If you suffer with blisters on or around your toes when you run, then these first three points will be an absolute game changer for you. I used to think blisters were a guaranteed part of running ultras. They're not and you can plan against them. If you can keep your feet feeling good and blister free, then you can handle anything on a long run. So this item is lubricant. So lubricant is next on my list. I have here a very small pot of it. This is why I pack in my bag. I don't actually have the bottle here to show you as I accidentally left my only squeezy bottle in a toilet near the start line of a recent race. You see, I have no footage of the start line. I arrived on time, but really, really needed to go to the toilet. The dreaded runners panic right at the start of the day. There is no worse feeling. I've got to be honest, while I'm moaning, because I've got the hump, this was not the best start to a race. I just hope that the next person going into that toilet was an ultra runner. Otherwise, finding a bottle of bum chafing cream in a men's cubicle in a McDonald's will not give off a good first impression of that establishment. Um, there was no way of putting this politely. I have to use some kind of lubricant or chafing cream on my bum. I keep this in my bag unused um, as soon as I use it obviously I discard it and then wash it up but yeah this is an unused pot that I squeezed in uh, for my bum cheeks it's as simple as that if I don't use it for a long run then they sting for days afterwards and start to feel really sore towards the end you see you need to choose the spot where you reapply this very very carefully um, if you know what I mean because it, it just looks wrong anyway moving on I also have daily supplements I take before any run they help me with my recovery and rehydration. This routine is relatively new to me. I take greens powder, electrolytes, iron, and vitamin D tablets. Let me show you them. So this is 
So this stuff here is the greens powder that I use. Uh, these are the electrolytes that I use. If you can see that. And then these are the, very simply, vitamin D and iron tablets that I take on a daily basis. Obviously follow the instructions on the pack. So iron and vitamin D tablets to help reduce tiredness and boost my immune system. I take these daily. These are just simple electrolyte tablets, which help with my overall daily hydration and recovery. They replace the salts and minerals I lose from regular running, daily, you know, training runs. The greens powder drink I use to boost my overall well-being and post-training recovery. This specific brand of greens drink has spirulina in it. I tried spirulina in its raw form and it made me gag when I drank it. So finding it in this orange and lime flavoured powder really helped me with needing to drink it on a daily basis. I found out about the benefits of spirulina by reading this book, Eat and Run, by Scott Durick. And I definitely recommend reading it if you're interested in learning more about ultra running and nutrition. I've been using these supplements for the past few months now, and I've already noticed a huge difference. Again, I'm not a doctor or sports nutritionist, quite the opposite. I'm just a heavy 43-year-old vegan, teetotal, coffee-loving dad who changed his lifestyle completely. And I'm still learning about running, zwifting and effective nutrition. I'm just trying to share what I'm doing now. If it's easier, think of this video as a journal rather than a how-to video. Next on my list is food. The supplements I just mentioned I don't carry with me on long runs. But food and energy gels I do carry with me. I currently use these precision energy gels. I'm not endorsing these, I just use them. I've tried using other... Uh, types of energy gels and I found them to be too sweet and sickly. I prefer these ones at the moment. I recommend buying a selection of different gels for your training runs and trying them out for yourself. This one uh, is pretty good. It's got 30 grams of carb in it and it contains about 120 calories. I struggle to eat anything when I run but I know I have to otherwise I'll crash and risk not finishing the run so I force gels down as a minimum. Staying on the subject of food I also carry these saurine bars and even though i don't feel hungry i know that if i slowly eat one of these every five or so miles i'm going to be okay and i know there's about 200 calories per bar and they give me the boost i need i also used to carry these precision hydration salt tablets electrolyte tablets the last time i used these was on the london ultra 55k uh, about a month ago but i then ruined that by dropping one of my electrolyte tablets into one of the bottles effectively making it salt water Good for replacing my lost salt I'm losing through sweat, but very bad for my dehydration. Basically, I messed up. I should have just kept it as fresh drinking water. There were other things I could have done to replace electrolytes without losing fresh water. I carry two 500 milliliter bottles with me on long runs. For the 55k London Ultra a few weeks back, I carried an additional 500 milliliter bottle with me as well because I was running in 30 plus degree heat. Dropping the hydration tab into one of my water bottles effectively made 50% of my running water salt water. I mean, that's what they're made for. They're made to replenish salt. Even though it's good for replenishing body salts, it royally balls up my hydration tactics and caused me to worry during that ultra run. To the point I had to stop and buy more water from a shop on route, which wasn't ideal and certainly wasn't planned for. I was really very aware of how dehydrated I felt. So I stopped at a co-op en route emptied the seawater I was carrying, drank the rest of my fresh water I had, and bought another litre of cold water. Drank that, replenished my supply, and indulged in a cold Lucasade. This immediately picked up my spirits. I stopped at a co-op and bought some Watertown Lucasade. It's just too hot. I now simply carry the salt tablets instead and swallow them during the run as instructed to on the packet, to fight off that awful feeling of dizziness and fatigue you get from excessive sweating. So I've now saved the best three kit list items to last. And probably the second most important item I own and use for running after my trainers is my running vest. This is, this is my running vest. It's a Solomon running vest. It's got a big open back and it's got places for your drinks to go at the front. It's a great vest. There's really not much to say about the vest other than it easily allows me to carry a litre of water in two 500 milliliter bottles that I place on my chest 
and a litre of water is enough for most long runs and I normally find somewhere to replenish it if I need to. You see, there is something to be said about having all your running gear separated around you and around your torso, not bouncing around in one place on the back. And then moving on from the backpack, for the record, I haven't mentioned a mobile phone on this list. As in 2023, I'm assuming everyone will carry one. A mobile phone is also on every mandatory kit list for every race anyway. Then on this list, the penultimate item is my, let me see if I can find it. This GoPro goes with me everywhere on every run. I always carry it. I know you don't need this to run and it's definitely an unnecessary weight to be carrying. You probably don't need to carry it, but I film pretty much every run I do, not only for YouTube, but also as a record of my progress. Remember, think journal. My GoPro neatly fits in between my vest and the side of me. I wear it here. And after a while, I forget it's there. I couldn't go anywhere without this GoPro. The final really important item is a good sports watch. I use this Garmin Phoenix something seven something. I bought it because I watched good reviews about it and it's probably the one thing I've bought for my running that's made the biggest difference since I started. I'm not going to go into the specs and details as there are hundreds of far superior YouTube videos about the Garmin Phoenix. It has the ability to track my runs and provide me with a, a GPX route en route. This removes the need to remember where I'm going and allows me to run long races without having to look out for the small markers en route. All I can say is, thank God for Garmin, because I've already got lost twice. I should add that even with my sparkly new tracking watch, I still got lost on the London Ultra several times, but this wasn't the fault of the watch. It was my fault. I, I get distracted far too easily when I run. For the Yorkshire Three Peaks last month, because there is so much room for error, a GPS tracking, route marking, mapping watch is a miracle on my wrist. Also, being able to track my time, pace and distance is really important to me. I'm notorious for running too fast in races with much faster runners and knowing I have to slow down is the difference between finishing and not. There are things that I always carry but haven't mentioned or highlighted in the body of this video, either because they're obvious or they're dependent on the type of race you're training for and running in. Normal plasters and blister plasters are a must and take up no room. Always carry some. I have a homemade running first aid kit that I always bring with me to long runs and races and I leave in the car for when I'm finished. And then a rain jacket and a silver blanket. I think they're called space blankets. Some mandatory race kit lists insist you carry these with you, but if I'm running an ultra through central London in a heat wave, I probably don't need to carry a rain mac and a blanket. If the weather forecast is rain or I'm running in winter conditions, then I'd pack these. Always check the weather forecast and plan accordingly. Sunglasses and a running cap is a definite. As you can tell from my ginger beard, I'm also susceptible to a sunburnt neck. A head torch. I'll pack this only if I know I'm running at night. I've got the Thames Path Ultra in September and I know I'll be finishing in a field in the pitch dark. So I'll definitely be carrying a good head torch and a spare pack of batteries for this race. And then my final point is cash money. Seems obvious, but the amount of times I've forgotten to carry cash with me on a long run, I run past a rural cafe or a shop and wish I had some money on me to buy a drink or an ice lolly, especially after a long run. Remember, your kit list should be created to mitigate against disaster. It's all about damage control. Things really go wrong in a dramatic way. They normally creep up on you slowly over time, and then by the time you realize what's happened, it's already too late. The golden rule for any running event is this. Train with the kit you have prepped with and do not change any of it for the actual race. If this video has been of any use to you, then please consider subscribing and please feel free to share your views in the comments below. Stop, Ryan. You can't run carrying all that stuff. You won't even get a mile up the road. No, I've got an idea. Come here and I'll tell you what to do. So what you want to do is this, this very carefully. Take that bag and plan it in such a way that the following